Hello guys, welcome to my new video and I'm going to show you this Rook Endgame which was quite tough, quite interesting, quite amazing, quite sad in a way. Before we start with the game, let's take a look at what both sides have to do. Black is hoping to promote his H pawn right now. White wants to somehow use this B pawn as well. Black's issue is that King on H5 is cut off from the G file. He would love to take the f4 pawn by getting to g4 and then take on e5. But right now it's not possible. And white would love somehow to catch this h pawn with the king, not with the rook. Because if let's say you go rook h7, king goes to g4 and as I was talking about before, king takes on f4 and then on e5. If you go let's say king e3, you give a check and separate the king from f4 pawn. So that's not the best idea. So what do you do as white? White had a drawing move here, b7. And now the rook is tied to the b pawn in a way. So if black pushes his h pawn, you don't do anything with the rook. You promote, threaten checkmate, so black has to capture. And now go with the king. And one more problem that black has is his e6 pawn. Because f4, yes, it is very vulnerable, rook can always attack it and take it, but e6 also lacks support in that case. And you go rook e7 in that case. You'll pick up on e6 if he defends. Then you go back to g7, cutting off the king. Be careful, if you don't cut off the king, it will go to g4. So if you take on h2, king goes to g4 and picks up both pawns. So let's say if white tries to defend at least e5, then black can go rook to b4, rook e4 and take on e5 with the rook. So that's really bad for white. So you have to cut off the king and then take on h2. If he goes back, you go back. And now e6 is always gonna be a problem for black. So after b7, h2, white promotes, black takes, and now king goes to help. And now f4 and d6 cancel each other out. White is gonna always attack e6 when black attacks f4, so these two just uh, neutralize each other. And we have a drawing position. But, unfortunately for Serbian team, white played rook g5. And now the king goes down to support the pawn. And now the b pawn is helpless. To make things even worse, you don't have rook g6 because you can simply take on b6, defend the pawn and still keep this pawn alive. So, white tried something else. He pushed the pawn, but still it gets taken. Rook g6 attacks the pawn. And now white gives this check, rook b2. So now you cannot go to g1, because the transition into pawn ending is winning, rook g2, takes takes, and after king takes, king goes to g4, picks up f4 and d5, and that's over. If you go to f1, h2 wins the game, because promotion happens, if you give a check, king g3 and the next is rook b1 with promotion, so that's also quite bad. And that's why white plays king f3 threatening checkmate, and to take on e6. So that's why black plays rook b3 check, king goes to f2, and now the pawn is pushed. And now the problem is that every pawn endgame is lost for white. If you go king g2, there's gonna be rook g3. And now we have a pawn ending after these moves, which is simply winning for black. You take on f4 and e5, and that's it. So, white tried here rook h6, but king g4 happened. And now if you take on h2, there's gonna be again exchange of rooks, after which king takes on f4 and d5, and that's it, once again. So he tried king g2, and after rook b6, he secured his e6 pawn, he's gonna take f4 and d5, and this is where white resigned. Also, a very nice winning line here was h1 queen. If king takes, then we have a rook exchange. And then king goes to g3, takes on f4 and d5. If rook takes instead, then you give a check on the second rank, exchange rooks, and then take on f4 and d5. So the key was not to let the king to get to g4. And it was only possible if you stop the h pawn with your king, not with the rook. Once white gave a check on h file, it was over. King went to g4 and f4 was so vulnerable. And then e5 as well. So that's it. If you liked the video, 
forget to like, forget to subscribe. Bye.